Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Let's get straight to it. The UK V model is indicating the colder air trickling back in from a northeasterly direction on the backside of an exiting low pressure that is now moving into um, the southern North Sea and the near continent here. So you can see the cold air at 850 millibars trickling back in, like I say, but it is a temporary process. As that air mass is moving in from the northeast, you cast your eyes to the southwest, and we've got warmer air moving in from a southwesterly direction. And we've got this kind of tug of war between the Arctic air in the east versus the Atlantic air in the west here. And eventually, what happens is the Atlantic air will win the battle here. And by the time we reach the weekend, we will be in bona fide mild air once again. As you can see here, that we are seeing 850s, uh, you know, 5 to 8 Celsius. And uh, we will see the snow melt, um, especially across more northern areas, deepen. Uh, looking at snow cover, you can see currently we've got the, you know, mainly high ground snow, uh, parts of Wales, northwestern England, a couple of spots over the Pennines, southern uplands, and southern highlands, particularly so Grampian up into the Northwest Highlands, we've got still a decent amount of snow cover on the ground. Now notice here as we play through the loop, with weather systems moving in from the Atlantic, we will see that uh, an initial um, return of some snow over higher ground, but then it quickly diminishes. You notice here it increases quite substantially during the early hours of Thursday, and then it very quickly vanishes. So uh, that is the, the warmer air moving in for the upcoming weekend here. Cold night to come, we will possibly see another minus 10 in the Highlands tonight. So this is the temperatures by the time we reach uh, early tomorrow morning, you can see minus 10 Celsius in a couple of spots across higher elevations, low elevations, minus two, minus four Celsius quite widely across the north. Notice it's a, a milder night across more Southern areas of Wales and England um and even southern portions of ireland also here so the cold will be in play clear skies light winds and some snow cover on the ground still will allow that temperature to drop substantially but if we then look at the maximum temperatures here and we play through the the rest of this week you can see here the recovery in temperatures here I constantly have to remove these adverts sorry about that but you see here as we play through the loop chilly during the first half of uh, tomorrow and in the Wednesday here, and then it's as we move towards the second half of the work week, there's the milder air moving in. Now, you notice here that the air remains relatively chilly across more northern areas, but sevens and eights and even nines now starting to show up by the time we reach Friday afternoon. By the time we reach Saturday afternoon, again, we're talking about nine, ten Celsius across the north probably 11 to 13 Celsius across the south of the UK here. Some interesting things going on here with regards to the stratosphere, folks. We do have the uh, latest run. This is the GEFS. This is the, the 100 uh, hectopascals or millibars. And we have, this is a, a tweet here by Christian, showing record-breaking, very strong heat fluxes for the end of December. What does that mean? It's tremendous pressure being put on the stratosphere from below, from the troposphere upwards here, and it's basically the the strength of the waves and the 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 the, the ripple effect of the atmosphere, so to speak, at five hundred millibars is really putting the work and and really helping slow down the mean zonal winds surrounding the polar vortex. But it's interesting nonetheless that the models are indicating towards the end of December some very strong pressure being emitted on the stratospheric polar vortex. And the models continuing to see this real slowdown, this deceleration in the winds as we move towards the, the end of the month. And that would really focus then the attention of a potential sudden stratospheric warming. And it's all speculative. No major sudden stratospheric warming, even if it does happen, uh, you know, provides, a, 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 it's not a guarantee for a cold pattern across the UK, Ireland, and Western portions of Europe. I want to I wanna emphasize that point right now, 
But certainly there's a lot of things going on at the moment that is looking very favourable for a cold pattern. And more and more models are indicating that uh, we see a potential reversal in the mean zonal winds towards the end of this month, but more likely January. Now, again, I refer back to the winter forecast. I did say that the potential was there for a cold, possibly Christmas New Year, but if not, during the early portion of January, then a possible pullback. That might not happen, actually, given what we're seeing at the moment with the models. But I'm thinking February is still the coldest month of the entire winter. And what is going to reinforce that idea is the latest run of the ECMWF. This is the new December forecast issued by the ECMWF. And it is a very, very interesting scenario here. This is a tweet here by Shrian Bruin indicating significant signal for Greenland blocking uh, during the January through March period here. So, you know, if this was remotely right, my forecast may be wrong, but it may be wrong because I'm too warm with it, believe it or not, because I've actually said an average, slightly above average winter temperature wise. The reason why I've said that is because I thought we would have equally as much warm periods as we would cold. It isn't, you know, a winter forecast where it is solidly 2019. And I know Gavin Partridge's winter forecast highlighted 0910. That was actually the, 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 the biggest analog year to, to this year, believe it or not. If you haven't already done so, be sure to check out his winter forecast. A tremendous amount of work put in, not only by Gav, but also Shrine Bruin, Richard Trott, and uh, Terry Scully as well. A tremendous team there at Gav's Weather Vids. I encourage you to check out his videos if you haven't already done so. And, uh, you know, he actually goes into a lot more detail with regards to the data, CET, factoring in different years with different, uh, you know, climate drivers in play. I haven't done that. Um, so he goes on a little bit further than I have with regards to the, the, the winter forecast. There's, in a sense, there's a little bit more um, back and up of his forecast as, as compared to mine, but there has... I'm not d diminishing my own winter forecast here, but um, you know, I like to share, um, you know, and and share the love, spread the love of other great forecasters out there, and it's very interesting. I'm kind of ranting and raving here and and rambling rubbish probably, but uh, a very interesting mean sea level pressure anomaly here. This is the January through February, uh, sorry, the January through uh, March period. And you can see here the mean uh, sea level pressure is above average Greenland and Iceland. We've got this negative extending from North America towards Europe. And uh, this would be the temperature profile of that. Um, and then the 500 millibar geopotential heights here. We've got that strong uh, positive, that block anywhere from eastern Alaska all the way towards the Greenland Sea here. That would certainly be a very interesting scenario if that was to be remotely true i do think we're going to see back and forths here i think we are going to see this mild spell during the middle portion of december um, we are going to see wind and rain we're going to see potentially a wet than average december where the temperature goes remains to be seen because we've had a cold start of the month so we're already on the fifth of the month which is still early days we have a warm surge coming up with the phase three, four, and five of the Manjulian oscillation. And then we'll have um, a big question mark over that period from about the 20th through the 31st of December here. What happens in that period? The MJO is expected to go into colder phases six and seven, and then possibly into eight and one and two for the harder winter season. That's going to be interesting to see what happens with the major sudden stratospheric warming. Do we see it happen? Do we see just a warming taking place, a pressure constantly put in the vortex? All these questions are there to be answered, and Mother Nature will answer that in due course, of course. But, uh, yeah, a very, very interesting upcoming few weeks to come. So I do encourage you to keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Be sure to like. If you're enjoying the content, let YouTube and myself know that you're enjoying it. And also share the love with your friends and family here and subscribe to the channel. 
because I do endeavor to try and show you a, a much bigger, broader picture than what other sources are showing you out there also. A couple of other interesting things I wanted to show you. Bavaria, southern portions of Germany, we've seen the record breaking snow in Munich. Other parts of Europe, you know, Poland, Germany, Czech Republic, tremendous amount of snow in the last week to 10 days. We've seen the temperatures respond also, minus 33, 34 Celsius uh, over parts of Scandinavia in recent times. And even down across southern Germany in the mountains here, we've seen temperatures as low as minus 26 in recent times. So very impressive cold over the continent here for, you know, the early portions of the winter season. Like I say, we are going to see a big pullback in the cold in the coming days to come. We've also seen the first minus 58.7 Celsius at Lima in Siberia. So that is the coldest so far in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and it's the coldest, it's the coldest temperature in this particular location in 40 years for the month of December. This is also the third year in a row, this is according to Thierry Goose, the third year in a row that Siberia has seen extreme cold in early December. Back in 2021, we've seen a temperature of minus 61.1 and uh, minus 61 in Oymyakon on the 12th of December uh, last year. So Siberia is really, really turning cold in the next day. Uh, well, now actually, and we're seeing a bit of a pattern change with the MJO shifting. We're seeing the cold. Remember, we've had a tremendous amount of warmth in parts of Russia, much, much of Russia as shown in the Global Weather Report back on Sunday there. But we're seeing a, a, a quite a significant change, and Siberia and Russia is starting to fill with cold. So here we go. You can see tremendous amounts of warmth across North America, right over the top with that firm negative Arctic Oscillation. But there you go, anywhere from the UK all the way across through Scandinavia, right the way across Russia, all the way to the Pacific Coast, We've got a tremendous amount of cold air, strong Siberian high pressure now in place. It'll be interesting to see if we get the minus 60s in the coming days to come. Also, what I want to emphasize is look at the amount of warmth across Kazakhstan, Mongolia, China. We're going to see all-time December records falling in the coming days here. So while we're seeing brutal cold now across Scandinavia, uh, all the way across Russia, we are seeing record breaking warm uh, temperatures further south. So that has to be emphasized that the, the middle latitudes really of Asia is exceptionally warm. So is Australia, as you can see, it's only central parts of Africa, Mexico, parts of Argentina, down in the lower latitudes that's actually below average. There is a tremendous amount of warmth globally, as has been the story uh, for quite some time now further south i always like to show you some perspective of course from a global uh, point of view finally let's have a look and see what the gfs is indicating one area of low pressure after the other moving in a little bit of snow in the leading edge is that milder bumps against the colder and then eventually what happens is that secondary feature the cold front moves through bringing a spell of very messy conditions heavy rainfall snow melt causing flooding etc etc but once that frontal system clears out we're in milder air that area of low pressure may cause problems in the coast with severe gales then another frontal system moves in into saturday and then we're in the proper mild atlantic air once again if you notice but there's going to be one system after another between now and the middle portion of next week then possibly higher pressure moving in as you can see and that would also be indicative of that the uh, manjulian oscillation uh, progressing through the continental maritime region so interesting times to come keep it right here on the channel and i'll see you again tomorrow with more weather content stay tuned enjoy the rest of your tuesday